Good morning once again, and welcome to Sunday Sunrise. I'm your host, Vicki Carmona. I'm here with Michael J. Merchant, who is the president of the Anazazi Foundation, and you've been there for 22 years. That's fantastic. Thanks. I'm glad to be here this morning. No problem. Thank you so much for coming in. Now, like I said before, you're the president of the Anazazi Foundation, so we're here, obviously, to talk about this great organization. Can you go ahead and give us a brief history lesson of it? Yeah, Anasazi actually started in 1988. It was founded by a man by the name of uh, Larry Dean Olson and another fellow by the name of Ezekiel Sanchez. So Larry Olson and Ezekiel Sanchez had been working with young people um, in, at colleges and universities for many, many years, taking them out in the outdoors, doing outdoor survival programs with them, giving them an opportunity to make some changes in their lives. And they came to Arizona in 1988 to start a program for youth Young mm-hmm. people 12 to 25 with substance abuse and emotional behavioral concerns. And it's all done out in the outdoors. Oh, wow. Now, how do you marry those two together? Because when I think of substance abuse, I don't immediately think the great outdoors. <laughs> it turns out it's just a perfect environment for young people to make changes. And uh, so the young people that come to us spend a minimum of 42 days out in the outdoors. They don't see a radio, a phone, a TV, a shower, anything for that period of time. Wow. There was some wonderful people who can help them sort through some of the problems of their lives. But it, be- it turns out it's a great place. Simply uh, one of it, it, one reason is it, it, re- it requires responsibility. It offers an environment where they can become completely responsible for their lives. There's no one to blame in that environment. And there's good people who can help them look at uh, their family relationships, look at the choices they're making in their lives, and help bring some guidance to them. Um, There's several things that take place when they go to the outdoors. One is the physical side of them starts to uh, heal. Um, they, the hiking, the exercise, the, the, the good diet, lots of fluids, getting up when the sun gets up, going down when the sun goes <laughs> down. Um, all of that out in the outdoors um, helps normalize their body, helps them get to a good place where they feel healthy and strong again, helps work through some of the things in their system that, that uh, may be clouding life a little bit for them. And then puts them in a nice place for them to receive the counseling and direction that would help guide their lives. Oh, okay. It definitely sounds like a program that works if you guys have been doing it since 1988, right? We have had uh, over 3,000 families come through our program. And I say families mm-hmm. because the young people, while they're out in the outdoors, we work with mom and dad. Um, we have a great parenting program, and the parenting program is designed to help mom and dad offer a new beginning to their child, really um, make some changes at home so that uh, when the child comes home, they do get a chance to start life anew. And that's what Anastasia is really about, is a new beginning. So it definitely sounds like you guys are actually trying to heal the entire family, not just the individual. That's correct. We've, we've learned for many years that as a young person... Um, spends that amount of time in the outdoors, um, hiking and camping and working with our staff, they um, they learn great things. But if they come back and people see them in the same way that they saw them before they left, um, they're likely to go right back to the things that they were doing before. Whereas when their family is, is willing to offer them a new beginning, where their hearts are forgiving, where, they're, where they're, uh, certainly their boundaries, certainly all of those things in place to help somebody, what we call walk forward in their life, um, it uh, when changes are made at home, they're they're really given that be- the best chance to succeed, best chance to sustain the changes they've made while in the program with us. Now we mentioned that you guys do this program with youth. What age group are you guys working with exactly? Well, we have we work with adolescents, twelve to to seventeen, and uh, and we also have a young adult group, which is eighteen to twenty five. Oh, okay, and. Do most of them have substance abuse problems, or do they come from a variety of different types of issues? A variety of different issues. Seventy percent of them have dabbled or abuse issue, um, but others come with um, depression, mood disorders, um, suicide ideation. Um, there's been a trauma in their life, for example, so they're experiencing depression, or um, they there's. Young people come with attachment disorders, anxiety issues. Mm-hmm. They're not functioning well at school. There's one of the most common elements among most of them is usually pretty severe family conflict is going on in their life. Oh, okay. So is that one of the reasons why you guys reach out to the families and the parents? That's correct. That's correct. All right. It definitely sounds like it might be a little tricky, though, getting all these people together. How does that work out, getting all these people with different issues in one group? Well, the groups group sizes are really small, and uh, group sizes range between three and eight. 
For mm-hmm. the adolescents, we have girls groups and boys groups, and they're kept separately. And so they're real small groups. And we, we really, when a young person comes in the program, they go through a, a very stringent screening process prior to coming mm-hmm. to make sure that, that we're the appropriate place for them, where, where we're really going to be able to help them. And we know quite a bit about them when they come. And then we spend the first four to six days with them kind of a, in an initial phase of the program where we're assessing them. And then we'll place them into a group where we think they're going to do the very best um, in the program. And then as far as parents getting them involved, um, we require it. And so if a mom and dad calls us and says, I, I really need help, I have a child who I feel is lost and, uh, and we need help, we say, well, there's a requirement on your side and that, that's, that you participate. And that means that they come to an orientation, they go through a 12-hour workshop, they then work with a therapist every week that's working with their child, and then they actually come at the end of the program and spend the night last two nights and three days out in the wilderness with their child, and it's a very powerful experience where the roles reverse, the child takes care of the parents, mm-hmm. and a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for them to begin anew. All right. Now, your organization is a 501c3, right? That's correct. So you guys are a nonprofit. It's a little different to see a nonprofit doing this type of work because usually they're into rescues or other situations. How did you guys make this into a successful nonprofit? Well, we're certainly into rescues. Um, <laughs> we have... We have um, there are many families who can't afford it. We're, we're licensed by the state of Arizona and we're accredited through the Joint Commission as a, as a behavioral health care provider. So families who can pay for it or do have insurance um, that, uh, that has benefits for mental health or behavioral health or substance abuse treatment, um, they'll often get coverage and that will help um, them pay for their child to participate in the program. But there are many families, as you know, don't have insurance, don't have financial means to help their child. And so we raise a lot of money to help those families. About half of the families that come to Anasazi come through financial aid money that we've raised, and we give it out in the form of scholarships based on the family's financial need and based on the child's appropriateness for placement, whether we think it's a child and a family that we can really help, and the parent's commitment to participate and be involved. So again, about half the families come because others have contributed and donated. Um, We do a a golf tournament every year with Steve Young um, here in the Valley called the Steve Young Classic. And we do a, a, a annual gala every year in November um, where we raise money. And then a lot of families contribute. And a lot of people here in the community have been very supportive on Asazi and the work that we do. That's fantastic. Now, you guys are doing quite a bit, and you guys actually have a fantastic website. Uh, can you go ahead and give the website for everybody out there? Yeah, it's anasazi.org. That's A-N-A-S-A-Z-I dot O-R-G. Now, would the calendar of fundraising events be up there? Yes, uh, you can uh, get information about how to contribute to Anasazi right on the website and uh, how you can really make a difference. And there's a lot of organizations that you can give money to. Um, This is one that we really feel strongly. um, The effectiveness, the outcome of this is really changing a life and, and changing a family and generations to come. Now, Michael, do you have any success stories that you want to talk about? Your favorite one, maybe? Um, yeah, I, I could share several stories. Um, <laughs> one that comes to mind right off, we had a young boy that came that uh, had been um, spending a great deal of time with a, a gang here mm-hmm. in the Valley and uh, struggling a great deal. He came to the program and, and was not happy about being there, um, but the alternatives for him were pretty bleak. And so he felt like this was you know, the best of the, of the worst alternatives there. Came and after spending a couple of weeks in the program, um, he he came to me one day and he says, "Anasazi changes you, whether you want it to or not. You know, it's <laughs> going to change you." And uh, the more time he spent in the program, the more he began to feel. And one day I sat with him and I remember him telling me that he had stolen cars, he'd stolen jewelry, he'd uh, done some pretty bad things to his family. And uh, while he was in the program, he'd stolen a little food from one of the other boys and uh, had confessed to it and given it back to, uh, or made that right with the boy that he'd stolen it from. And he said, it's the strangest feeling all of a sudden to feel guilty for stealing food when I've stole all these other things and I never felt guilty at all. Uh Um, Because what happens is their sensitivities start to heighten again. They start to feel an obligation towards the people around them. Anasazi is really about a change of heart, not a change of behavior. There's no point or level systems. It's not about 
um, having young people make choices to get rewards and avoid consequences. This is a deep change. This is a change where it starts with gratitude towards family, towards the things that they've been given and the opportunities, and they start to feel um, the love for their parents and family again. And that changes everything. We want them to come home and make choices thinking about the people around them. And uh, so this, that's why we say it's a family program. What do you say to young people out there listening that might be having a hard time or their parents? Oh, great question. For young people who are having a hard time, find help. Go to somebody that you love and trust and be transparent. Transparency equals trust. And if you'll just open up, share with somebody the difficulties of your life, how things might be a little cluttered and seek help. Don't feel alone in this process. And for parents, the same thing. Find help. Find someone who can help you. I always tell parents that your influence rests on how often you have those windows of time when you're just right with one another. And uh, you can talk and share concerns and struggles and needs and your child hears you. If that's happening every day or a couple times a a week, at least you have a lot of influence to help Mm -hmm. things go right for your child. If those are happening few and far between, if not ever, you might need an outside intervention like Anasazi, like the work that we do, where we can help bring that back for you. Um, but stay connected to your children it's, and uh, never, ever give up. Believe me, I've watched people change, young people that you would never have imagined would change. You've come with the darkest countenances and watching their lives turn around and then eventually going on to be parents and families, have parent, or just being a parent and having children and families of their own. That's fantastic. Now, Michael, we've definitely covered quite a bit about Anazazi, but have we missed anything? Is there anything that you would like to add? I think um, one of the other, one of the things that's important as well is we also offer parenting seminars every Saturday. Okay. So if there's parents who just maybe not feel like their child is is to the degree to where they might need an outside intervention, but might want some help, um, they they we'd love to have them come. So any Saturday there at Anasazi Foundation, they go from eight to four. You just call into the office there at four eight zero eight nine two. 7403 and just register and uh, and come. It's a great resource. It certainly gives parents some tools that are very, very helpful to them. Fantastic. All right. Michael, once again, thank you so much for coming in today and telling us about this fantastic organization. Can we give out the website one more time for people out there that might have missed it? Yes, it's anasazi.org. That's A-N-A-S-A-Z-I dot O-R-G. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Glad to be here.